Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of The Lewa Show. It is wonderful to have you join me once again. I am your host, Lewa Kana, and we're coming to you from the Apex House. It is such a pleasure also to have with me here today, Michelle Haofa and Janet Yaki. Thank you both for joining me today. Thank you for having us. I'd love to introduce you, but I feel like you should do that yourself. Did you want to start, Michelle? Um, my name is Michelle Howarth. Uh, I'm the founder of the Roger Howarth Kidney Foundation. Um, and I'm here mainly to talk about the work that we're doing, especially our signature fundraising event, which is Dakota for Kidneys. Yeah. Um, and I'm uh, Janet Yaki. Uh, I'm, f I'm the founder of uh, PNG Stoma Association, and I help uh, patients uh, with um, supplies. Thank you. Thank you both so much. We'll start with you, Michelle. Now, why? Why Roger Howell for Kidney Foundation? Um, my father um, suffered from kid kidney disease for over a year. And um, at that time, there wasn't a lot of support around kidney health. Um, so our family really had to walk that journey uncharted, ourselves, no support. Um, and it was, it was difficult uh, with, you know, we had to uh, search for information ourselves, uh, find out what needed to be done, how we could support dad. And um, without support, um, it made it more difficult for dad to go through it. And it really made it difficult for us as a family. Um, I have to say though, it did make us stronger as a family unit and we all rallied behind dad. Um, but the foundation was set up so other families going through this um, don't have to do it themselves and they do have some kind of support. So if you don't mind me, let's just take a step back. When was Mr. Howafer diagnosed, the late Mr. Howafer? Um, late 2015. Um, and. Uh, He'd had symptoms, but um, you know, Dad, he didn't take them seriously, so we didn't take them seriously. Um, but one time in the office, um, he just started shaking uncontrollably. And um, the program manager at the time, Denise, who um, just loved Dad as a father figure, um, immediately uh, got him to the hospital uh, where he was diagnosed. Um, so, you know, we were faced with all kinds of options. You know, how do we do this? What are the options available to us? Um, one of them, of course, is uh, dialysis, which means a machine takes the place of your kidneys. kidneys. Um, another option was perhaps to do a kidney transplant. Um, and then again, you know, you're researching options and how viable is it for someone of dad's age to do right. it? What are the survival rates? Or what are the chances of that kidney taking? Um, dad was um, O blood type. So he's a universal donor that can only receive from mm. O blood type. Mm. So that made things more difficult. So these are all things that we had to find out ourselves. As you were going through that journey. As we were going journey. through it. Yeah, so um, we knew that we had to raise money. So dad being as loved as he was. Yes, he was a um, very big personality in yeah. Papua New Guinea and we do acknowledge his services to our country. Thank you, thank you Lewa. Well we reached out to the public because we thought uh, people would want to have, um, you know, contribute something to dad's health and the, the outpouring of love from around Papua New Guinea was just overwhelming. And um, you know, we, we can't thank uh, the people of Papua New Guinea enough for all the support that they showed us. Um, we walked the Kokoda track in 2016 and that was our first Kokoda for Kidneys and this was specifically for Dad. So that was the, the the start of that being the significant fundraiser for the Kidney Foundation. Correct. Um, we raised over 80,000 kina and the aim of that was to take Dad overseas right. um, for a proper our prognosis to see what could be done at his um, stage in life and at his stage of kidney disease but unfortunately by the time we'd raised that money his condition just deteriorated rapidly and he spent quite a bit of time in and out of ICU um, all the while going through um, 
thrice weekly dialysis sessions. So three times oh. a week he was there going through dialysis. And they're not short too. They they can span oh. for like six to eight hours at a time. He was there for, for most of a day. Yeah. And then he'd feel absolutely drained afterwards and then he'd feel really thirsty. So he'd want to drink water, which as a kidney patient, you have to limit your fluid intake because your kidneys can't process it. So it was a very, very difficult journey. Um, and so, you know, we, um, of course, our family also supported us financially. Um, and Dad passed in March of 2017. But, you know, we, Dad was about helping others. That was his heart. Um, and Janet, I think you have a really lovely story about how Dad um, helped you with your cause. Yes. You want to share that really quickly? Yeah. Uh, we had this walk from Ella Beach to the stadium at Connie, and um, he was the um, master of ceremony. ceremony yes. yes. So when we went there, he welcomed us, and then I went up to him and say hi. And he saw my t shirt. He says, PNG Stoma Association. And he says, He's so curious. And he says, What is Stoma? And I explained to him what Stoma was. And then he invited me to the talk back show. Twice he did that. And he did a very good job. And that's where people learned about what stoma was. And, you know, uh, he explained it very well using the actual words about, we call it waste, but what he used was like more the language. Mm -hmm. so, the yeah. So he was very good. And that was Dad's heart, helping mm. others wherever he could. Um, and I guess that's why there was such a big outpouring of love from all over the country. Because, yes. um, you know, he he did everything from hosting um, phonathons to raise money for all kinds of natural disasters, yes. mm. to being MC for fundraising events free of charge. You know, he was the mm. MC for my dad's 50th. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps. Yes, 50th. I've ever been to and I'm not being biased because that's my dad but because he was just a tremendous MC. Oh, yeah. Thank you, thanks for the memory. Yeah, I think we all have a memory and I think it's just fantastic that you've carried on his legacy in, it, in, in this way with what you're doing and I can't wait to ask you more questions and you as well Janet. We'll take a quick water break because I can see tears welling up in all our eyes right now. You are watching The Lower Show, we'll be right back. watching The Lower Show. I have Michelle and Janet here with me today. Thank you, Michelle, for sharing about the Roger Howell for Kidney Foundation. And now, Janet, PNG Stoma Association. How did this start? Um, well, um, I'm a colorectal cancer survivor. And uh, it took me like 10 to 15 years to know what was happening to my body. I didn't even tell my my own family until you know it was a little too late, and I went then for medical checkup because you know in our culture anything to do with that that is a taboo, right. or they would say it's uh, poisoning or they would they'll put it down yeah, to something superstition. else. Superstition, yes. So I never really yeah. wanted to tell even my family. So when I went in, they um, to PIH, they told me I had a cancer, but they didn't know the extent of the cancer, the bowel cancer. So uh, they they couldn't, uh, they didn't have a colonoscopy too. So yes, colonoscope. So they couldn't do the colonoscopy. So um, they referred me overseas. So I went overseas and. Uh, as soon as I arrived, I had my surgery in Taiwan in 2009. So um, it was very difficult. 
for me to accept that I would be living with, you know, this kind of condition. You with a stomach. That alone. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, the stoma is an uh, opening, surgical opening on the outside wall of the stomach and where um, where the feces exit from. So what uh, uh, what we use is bags. So these are some of the bags. They come in. Pull one out just so we they come in different uh, sizes. Like this one is for a little uh, child. Have you seen one of these before, Michelle? No, yeah. I haven't. And I'm I'm heartbroken that there are children who go through this. Yeah, the children that are born with a birth defect. Mm. They've got no anus, <laughs> no outlet, so. Yes. Doctors do a surgery and then um, help them relieve themselves yeah. while waiting for them to create an, an artificial yeah. yeah, anus. After so that, an artificial one, yes. they're born without. Yes, so then they are, uh, the doctors reverse or they do a closure mm -hmm. and then they back, go back to like normal, uh, normal functioning of the bowel. Right. Yeah. So that's more like a temporary. Yeah. This is more like the temporary. Well, I'd say it's more like a toilet pot to us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a. We call it. Uh, these are called uh, pediatric bags for children, and for the adults. I'm pulling. Them. For the adults, they come in big sizes, depending on the stomach size. You, I measure the stoma and then cut to the stoma size and put it over the stoma and the waste flows into the bag. So basically it's just around here? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it flows into the bag and so this one is drainable. Like that one, the pediatric bag was drainable. Then we have closed ones. So, and we have, it comes in different sizes, oval shape and a uh, uh, circle and oval shape, they come in different, you know, so uh, depends on the stoma, how, if it's round, then we use the round bags. If it is oval, then we use the, I give them the oval bags. So, uh, like I was saying, uh, the patients in PNG, uh, this is, not readily available, and not in the shops, not in the, well, there's a chemist that's selling it. Uh, so what, what happens is um, uh, they use uh, plastic shopping bags, diapers, yes, uh, yeah, and uh, um, I mean, every time I see it, you know, it really breaks my heart. So I try my best to, give this because when they use those things then they have additional infections, infections. yes so and then uh, when there are infections like that I when they come to me I provide them the special to st uh, stomach powder so they use a stomach powder and it heals, heals it up quite fast you yeah. mentioned a round or open <coughs> stomach what is a stomach uh, this, the stoma I, I just learned about it today as well right. from yeah. Janet, yeah. The stoma is a surgical opening right. and the doctors do the surgery. Right. So they, uh, if, if it is bowel cancer, like for me, they removed the diseased part mm. and then brought the good part from there and they, I have a stoma. Right. Yes, on the outside wall of my stomach. Mm. So like, it would be like, I no longer have a bottom there, I have a bottom in the up front. Here. <laughs> yeah. And that's amazing how you came up with this association because like Michelle said, there was no information readily available for you. Mm. Then you've now gone and made it readily available for others. Yeah. How many people do you, do you, do you help? Well, um, so far, uh, as of 2011, I have helped um, to this day is 300 and um, I had 313 
But this morning somebody called me, one thing, uh, the colostomy bags, we call this adult bags, colostomy bags, and uh, uh, the Good pediatric ones. bags. Then we also have the urostomy, where anybody who's got a bladder cancer, or like I, I also treated a person with a kidney problem, mm. you know, I, you know, yeah. mostly it was more runny, so I gave him the uh, urostomy bag to use. So that's how uh, my uh, God healed me. I never knew anything about uh, stoma or colostomy, anything. But when I went for surgery, then I came back and I didn't know whether I, how my friends, my family uh, would accept me, especially my grandchildren, whether they would accept me or not. So, that is an I knocked myself story. up for one whole year. Yeah. Because this is the first time I've heard about or I've had this. And um, I locked myself up. And one day I went to the hospital and I wanted to find out from the doctors if there were any. Um, any other patients who lived with the same condition as me. And the doctor says, oh, there's a lot of patients. I said, okay, I didn't know that. So then uh, I was just about to go out and he was having a review of a small two-year-old. Wow. And he says, uh, Janet, come back and see this little boy. And he was a two-year-old and the grandmother had taken him to the hospital and he was, um, uh, a dirty nappy. Mm. Nappy was wrapped around the waist to collect the to the collect waist. the feces. Yeah. yeah. Ah, I said I'm 50 and over, and here I am feeling sorry for myself, mm. locking myself up. As soon as I walked out of that hospital, seeing that two-year-old changed me. <laughs> That's how I created the PNG Stoma Association. That is powerful, mm. Janet. Powerful. Yeah, so, yeah, because God, God did all these wonders for me while I was uh, going through all this uh, pain and all that, so um, even my, my um, expenses in Taiwan, it was met by the hospital. Wow. And just think, you know, I don't know these people, but because I went there and the, the Taiwan rep here contacted them saying that, you know, because uh, my husband was a former uh, politician too, so they knew him through there. And at one time, they, he supported them. So through that, they paid for the bill, everything. Wow. That's so, 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 so you found that, that purpose that God allowed you to go through this. Yes. Um, is to be able to create awareness and to help a yes. two-year-old and anybody else going yes. through it. And we found that with, sorry, Janet, we found that with dad's disease because we thought, you know, I was ready to go. I said, well, I'll give, I'll donate my kidney and we're just going to go to Singapore and we'll have the transplant and we're going to come back and everything's they going to be, be great. Done, yes. um, but God is, God is, his thoughts are higher than ours and yes. I'm not compatible with my dad blood type wise mm. so for many reasons that solution that I had in my head was not going to work instead God had us go through the whole journey mm. from diagnosis to treatment to um, struggling to take care of a patient and finally to dad's passing and you know dealing with that and dealing with him gone so we walked that full journey yeah, yeah. and it just became clear to us that that's why God allowed that to happen Happens. so mm. we can now we, we know it we felt it we walked it we cried through it yes. um, and now we understand how to help other families mm. you go from a helpless situation to yeah. almost being empowered to make yeah. sure that no one else feels helpless yes. yeah. exactly yeah. that's powerful and so for me it was like you know, uh, out of my own brokenness, mm. you know, God used me to make another person whole. Wow. So, 
That's what I do. That's so beautiful. Uh, after the trauma, when they come out of surgery, uh, they don't um, they don't know what they want to do, how they want to live uh, live through this. And um, you know, uh, they call me and I go to them, and they think like I'm a normal person. You know, we we are called ostomates, and uh, we have we are disabled, but invisible disability you cannot see it. but i have a disability so when they see me uh, they think i'm a doctor or nurse but you know I, in the end i tell them my story uh, like when i'm uh, counseling them and uh, and then you see that smile and the face the face which was you know like they were so traumatized and um you give them hope in, yes. that, in that moment. Yes. So s some of them, they tell me, uh, no, we don't believe you. Uh, they want to see my, you know, bag. So I show them. I mean, that gives them uh, uh, some positive thinking. Oh, yeah, okay, we can live that long. So I tell them, I've, I've lived for so many years. Now it's come uh, past July. That's uh, my 10 years of being a Praise survivor. Oh God, wow. Mm. Oh, Janet, we're going to hold that thought right there because I've got a few questions for you and I'm sure mm -hmm. Michelle does too. We will be right back. You're watching The Lower Show. Watching the Leo Show, I have Michelle and Janet here with me today. Thank you, Michelle, for sharing about the Roger Howell Kidney Foundation. And now, Janet, PNG Stoma Association. How did this start? Um, well, um, I'm a colorectal cancer survivor, and uh, it took me like 10 to 15 years to know what was happening to my body. I didn't even tell my my own family until you know it was a little too late, and I went then for medical checkup because you know in our culture anything to do with that that is a taboo, right. or they would say it's uh, poisoning or they would they'll put it down yeah, to something superstition. else. Superstition, yes. So I never really yeah. wanted to tell even my family. So when I went in, they um, to PIH, they told me I had uh, cancer, but they didn't know the extent of the cancer, the bowel cancer. So uh, they they couldn't, uh, they didn't have a colonoscopy too. So yes, colonoscope. So they couldn't do the colonoscopy. So um, they referred me overseas. So I went overseas and. Uh, as soon as I arrived, I had my surgery in Taiwan in 2009. So um, it was very difficult for me to accept that I would be living with, you know, this kind of condition you with a stoma. That alone. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, the stoma is an uh, opening, surgical opening on the outside wall of the stomach, and where. Um, where the feces exit from. So what uh, uh, what we use is bags. So these are some of the bags. They come in. Pull one out just so we they come in different uh, sizes. Like this one is for a little uh, child. Have you seen one of these before, Michelle? No, yeah. I haven't. And I'm, I'm heartbroken that there are children who go through this. Yeah, the children that are born with a birth defect. Mm. They've got no anus, <coughs> no outlet. So yes. doctors do a surgery and then um, help 
them relieve themselves yeah. while waiting for them to create an, an artificial yeah. yeah, anus. After so that, an artificial one. Yes. They're born without. Yes. So then they are uh, the doctors reverse or they do a closure mm -hmm. and then they back go back to like normal uh, normal functioning of the bowel. Right. Yeah. So that's more like a temporary. Yeah. This is more like the temporary. Well, I'll say it's more like a toilet pot to us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a we call it. Uh, these are called uh, pediatric bags for children, and for the adults. I'm pulling. Them. For the adults, they come in big sizes, depending on the stomach size. You, I measure the stoma and then cut to the stoma size and put it over the stoma and the waste flows into the bag. So basically it's just around here? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it flows into the bag and so this one is drainable. Like that one, the pediatric bag was drainable. Then we have closed ones. So, and we have, it comes in different sizes, oval shape and a uh, uh, circle and oval shape, they come in different, you know, so uh, depends on the stoma, how, if it's round, then we use the round bags. If it is oval, then we use the, I give them the oval bags. So, uh, like I was saying, uh, the patients in PNG, uh, this is, not readily available, and not in the shops, not in the, well, there's a chemist that's selling it. Uh, so what, what happens is um, uh, they use uh, plastic shopping bags, diapers, yes, uh, yeah, and uh, um, I mean, every time I see it, you know, it really breaks my heart. So I try my best to give this because when they use those things then they have additional infections, infections. yes so and then uh, when there are infections like that I when they come to me I provide them the special to uh, stomach powder so they use a stomach powder and it heals, heals it up quite fast you yeah. mentioned a round or open <coughs> stomach what is a stomach uh, the stoma I, I just learned about it today as well right. from yeah. Janet, yeah. The stoma is a surgical opening right. and the doctors do the surgery. Right. So they, uh, if, if it is bowel cancer, like for me, they removed the diseased part mm. and then brought the good part from there and they, I have a stoma. Right. Yes, on the outside wall of my stomach. Mm. So like it would be like I no longer have a bottom there, I have a bottom in the up front. Here. <laughs> yeah. And that's amazing how you came up with this association because like Michelle said, there was no information readily available for you. Mm. Then you've now gone and made it readily available for others. Yeah. How many people do you, do you, do you help? Well, um, so far, uh, as of 2011, I have helped um, to these days, 300 and um, I had 313, but this morning somebody called me. One thing, uh, the colostomy bags, we call these adult bags, colostomy bags, and uh, um, the it pediatric works. bags. Then we also have the urostomy, where anybody who's got a bladder cancer, or like I, I also treated a person with a kidney problem. You know, I, you know, yeah. mostly it was more runny, so I gave him the uh, urostomy bag to use. So that's how uh, my uh, God healed me. I never knew anything about uh, stoma or colostomy, anything. But when I went for surgery, then I came back and I didn't know whether I how my friends, my family uh, would accept me, especially my grandchildren, whether they would accept me or not. 
So that is an I knocked myself story. up for one whole year. Yeah. Because this is the first time I've heard about or I've had this. And um, uh, I locked uh, myself up. And one day I went to the hospital and I wanted to find out from the doctors if there were any, um, any other patients who lived with the same condition as me. And the doctor says, oh, there's a lot of patients. I said, okay, I didn't know that. So then uh, I was just about to go out and he was having a review of a small two-year-old. Wow. And he says, uh, Janet, come back and see this little boy. And he was a two-year-old and the grandmother had taken him to the hospital and he was um, uh, a dirty nappy. Mm. Nappy was wrapped around the waist to collect the, to the, collect the feces, yeah. Mm. Uh, I said, I'm 50 and over, and here I am feeling sorry for myself, mm. locking myself up. As soon as I walked out of that hospital, seeing that two-year-old changed me. <laughs> That's how I created the PNG Stoma Association. That is powerful, mm. Janet, powerful. Yeah, so, yeah, because God, God did all these wonders for me while I was uh, going through all this uh, pain and all that, so um, even my my um, expenses in Taiwan, it was met by the hospital. Wow. And just think, you know, I don't know these people, but because I went there, and the the Taiwan rep here contacted them, saying that you know, uh, because my husband was a former. A uh, politician too, so they knew him through there. And at one time, they, he supported them. So through that, they paid for the bill, everything. Wow. That's so, 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 so you found that that purpose that God allowed you to go through this. Yes, um, is to be able to create awareness and to help a yes. two-year-old and anybody else going yes. through it. And we found that with. Sorry, Janet, we found that with Dad's disease because we thought, you know, I was ready to go. I said, well, I'll give, I'll donate my kidney and we're just going to go to Singapore and we'll have the transplant and we're going to come back and everything's they going to be, be great. Done, yes. um, but God is, God is, his thoughts are higher than ours and yes. I'm not compatible with my dad oh. blood type wise. Mm. So for many reasons, that solution that I had in my head was not going to work. Instead, God had us go through the whole journey mm. from diagnosis to treatment to um, struggling to take care of a patient and finally to dad's passing and you know dealing with that and dealing with him gone. So we walked that full journey, journey yeah. and it just became clear to us that that's why God allowed that to happen. Mm. So we can now, we, we know it, we felt it, we walked it, we cried through it. Yes. Um, and now we understand how to help other families. Mm. You go from a helpless situation to yeah. almost being empowered to make yeah. sure that no one else feels helpless. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's powerful. And so for me, it was like, you know, uh, out of my own brokenness, mm. you know, God used me to make another person whole. Wow. So that's what I do. That's so beautiful. We, uh, after the trauma, when they come out of surgery, mm. uh, they don't um, they don't know what they wanna do, how they wanna live uh, live through this. And um, you know, uh, they call me and I go to them, and they think like I'm a normal person. You know, we we are called ostomates, mm. and uh, we have we are disabled, but invisible disability. You cannot see it but I have a disability. So when they see me, uh, they think I'm a doctor or nurse, but you know, I, in the end, I tell them my story, uh, like when I'm uh, counseling them, and, uh, and then you see that smile and the face, the face which was, you know, like they were so traumatized and- um, You give them hope in, yes. that, in that moment. Yes. 
So some of them, they tell me, uh, no, we don't believe you. Uh, they want to see my, you know, bag. So I show them. I mean, that gives them uh, uh, some positive thinking. Oh yeah, okay, we can live that long. So I tell them, I've, I've lived for so many years. Now it's come uh, past July. That's uh, my 10 years of being a Praise survivor. God. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, Janet, we're going to hold that thought right there because I've got a few questions for you and I'm sure mm -hmm. Michelle does too. We will be right back. You're watching The Lower Show. back with the lower show Michelle so we were just talking with Janet and Janet did say there was a point when she wanted to be alone because she wasn't comfortable talking about it mm. in your case I think you were there with dad from the very beginning mm. that would have been traumatic for the family how was it how did you adjust to that before you realized you needed to get right in there um, I think we just immediately went on autopilot okay. you know we were just responding to the need just straight away we called a family meeting um, we said this is dad's situation this is what needs to be done these are the options um, and so we were just going from uh, moment to moment um, and responding as we needed to so um, it's quite a stressful uh, place to be um, and one of the objectives of the uh, Roger Howell for Kidney Foundation. Uh, the first one is to um, promote healthy living as a means of preventing kidney Thank disease. Um, the second objective is to provide um, quality, affordable, accessible treatment for kidney disease. So all of those are, for us were very important. It had to be a quality uh, treatment. Um, it had to be affordable and had to be accessible. Um, the third objective is to um, support um, not just the patient, but the carer as well. Yes. Because, you know, everyone's going through a very difficult time. Um, and I know personally, I could have been a better daughter if I had the information, you know, not wow. be so impatient with dad and um, not get cross at him for drinking more than he should have that day because it would mean that his lungs would fill up with liquid and then he wouldn't be able to breathe oh. and then we'd have to rush him to hospital. So there were all of these things that if we were better educated, we would have been able to um, help him to navigate this time and, you know, with dignity. Yes. You know, um, I think that's Because they're important. at their most vulnerable at that time, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and you sort of, you're, you're there complete other human that yeah. has to do everything else yes. for them yeah that's a pretty vulnerable state to be in if you're used to being you know independent and doing everything yeah. yourself and then you know dad was just this larger than life yes mm. always strong you know the strongest man I I know um, and t so to see him in that situation it was uh, quite confronting so that's our third objective and then of course our fourth objective is to work with other stakeholders especially our Department of Health and our hospital. Um, so any funds that we're raising this year is supporting the new renal centre, uh, new kidney centre at the Port Moresby General Hospital. Wow. Yeah. So when is that said to be opening? Um, by the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. So, so how many units do they have? So the dialysis units? I believe yeah. there'll be about eight. Wow. Mm. So um, it won't, like it's not the only, um, they're not the only dialysis machines. So dad was treated at Pacific PIH. Yes. Um, but it is a private hospital, so you know mm. they have to make money. So you know you're paying um, minimum 1,000 kina for every dialysis session. So that's minimum 3,000 kina. And that's how many times? Three times. Three times. Ooh. 
So that's really out of the reach of ordinary Papua New Guineans. Very um, out of the reach. There, there is another kidney foundation. They were charging something like 120 kina, I think, at that time. Um, but even then, if you're doing that three times a week, that's 360. Yeah. And if you're doing that the every week, just to live, it's it's out of the reach yeah, that's of our expensive. people. expensive. So, um, you know, the big dream is to be able to subsidise these payments because it's not just the machines, you know, you have to have the consumables, you have to have the expertise to be yes. able to operate the machines. The so, carers as well. Yeah, so there's a, there's a whole bigger picture other than just the machines. Just the machines, yes. So, you know, our aim is to be able to provide that support to families. So, you know, perhaps the financial burden, if that's lifted, then they can focus on, mm. on yeah. you know, looking after their, their loved one. That's, yeah, that's very, very important to have that, make sure the family support is there, yeah. you know, because you're, you're carrying, essentially carrying them through. Yeah. You've got the first bowel cancer awareness walk coming up this year. Yes. When will that be held? Uh, on the 5th of October. Every first uh, Saturday is World Ostomy Day. So this is on a Saturday that um, I've decided uh, I was going to walk alone because, uh, you know, everything I do, I do alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have anybody who's helping me. So, well, we'll walk so with I you. posted it. We'll be right, there. Michelle? Yes. <laughs> we'll be there. We'll be there. <laughs> I posted it on, uh, on PNG Stoma page on Facebook, and there was a lot of them uh, who were interested. Wow. Yeah, but the first walk is more like free because it's more the for first, awareness. It's more for awareness. But if anybody wants to um, donate or what, they, you know, it's welcome. Uh, but it's more to remember those that have passed, mm -hmm. and uh, second is to create awareness on bowel cancer because very little is known about bowel cancer. And then uh, we have our culture and taboos mm -hmm. that nobody wants to talk about. Uh, what happens like when, you, uh, when there are symptoms like passing out blood in the urine and uh, the feces, nobody wants to talk about it. And you we shouldn't be talking about it, yeah, right? Well, it shouldn't be taboo. Yes, but you know, we still have our culture. And yes. then we have this, the new, new culture of Western coming in and we still have our culture and then you don't know, you are in the middle. Mm. So I'm trying to break that barrier. I don't want, you know, I may not live long. If I die tomorrow, then there won't be any awareness on bowel cancer. Yes. So there are uh, 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 another stigma, the stigma that we face uh, you know, uh, little children, school-age children, uh, they cannot go to the mainstream, you know, education system because of the bag and the order and, uh, you know, it's very difficult. So uh, one of the other things is that uh, by creating this awareness, I, I'm hoping that the state and maybe the uh, health department can work in partnership with PNG Stoma Association so that because these bags are not read, readily available in the wards. So you imagine they are calling me in the middle of the night or uh, even during the day and I go there and I, I feel uh, so I mean that's the reality of, reality of what if we I, face. If I, if I say, it is not negative to the hospital. No, the no. doctors are doing a very good job. They are saving lives. Mm -hmm. But it's the post-surgery care that is not there for us osteomates. It's not there. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm providing that care from outside. But if they are in the wards, that's the hospital's duty. Right. It's the state's duty. They have a duty of care to provide these things. Mm -hmm. People should not be suffering in the hospital. But I don't mind because I can go and I can help them. You have a well, big heart, yeah. Janet. You really I, do. 
I first uh, heard of Janet's work um, when she was a finalist in the Westpac yes. Outstanding Women oh. Awards. Wow. And I have been a fan of your work <sighs> since that. I knew nothing about um, Stoma before that. And then when you spoke about it and uh, when they highlighted your work, I was a big fan from that moment. Um, and and as now Mel you're said, here together, uh, this well, just warms my heart. We'll be, we'll be there at the walk. Yes. We'll come support you. Oh, thank and you. then, yeah, we just need to know how to support the work that you do. Yes. So one of my, uh, the whole thing about walking is, uh, I don't have an office. I work out from my home. And all this time, how many, eight years, I've been doing that. And I, when uh, patients order, I have to prepare them and then take them to the hospital, bags of them, you know. And um, just uh, two, three weeks ago, this beautiful lady, uh, uh, Yolande, from uh, Number One Trophy Limited, she heard about me wow. through uh, the Cancer Foundation fundraising. Mm -hmm. and. Um, she emailed me and she said she was willing to help. So um, I am now, uh, she gave me a key to a space. Wow. In, yeah, Badili. So uh, just this week and last week, I've been trying to move all That's the supplies amazing. from Seven Mile. Thank you, Yolanda, if you're watching. Mm, yeah, thanks, Yolanda. <laughs> and Greg Neville, who also gave me a container, fully shelf container and air conditioning 724, uh, he's moved it to his yard. Wow. So, you know, this and Curtin Brothers, they've been so good to me. And they are, I mean, so it's about, this walk is about creating awareness. Because I don't get any funding from uh, mm. a lot of funding. Mm. It's more about uh, awareness and uh, that people understand what stoma is and uh, that the communities should, if they have any people living with this condition, they should respect and uh, n not letting that person down uh, by calling them names or, you know, that kind mm. of thing. PNG is a place where there's too many beliefs and superstitions and all that. Right. The very first thing when a person is having that symptom of blood coming uh, mentally it's already in their mind that it's poison yeah mm -hmm. unfortunately isn't called, it you know yeah being mm -hmm. called uh, bowel cancer yes cancer blobel so yeah. that's so the walk will help to shed light to all mm -hmm. of this and also your kokoda for kidneys walk as well to raise funds and get yes. the awareness out there for both of you doing amazing work so yeah. I'll do my thank yous very soon but I do have one last question to ask you guys but we will have to take a break okay. right now. Yeah. You are watching The Lower Show, we're coming to you from the Apex House. Welcome back with us on The Lower Show. Before we go, is there any final words that you ladies would like to share? Yeah, um, so um, we've had a number of fundraising events this year. Um, we had Kokoda for Kidneys, which raised about 20,000 kina. Um, we had Choir for Kidneys, where the Port Choir. Moresby Choral Society dedicated its July performances to the Roger Howard for Kidney Foundation. Mm -hmm and that raised 3,085 kina. Beautiful. Um, I turned 50, so I used that significant birthday um, to raise funds well, you don't for the foundation. Thank Side you. Side note. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, you know, um, I don't need anything. 
um, I have everything I, you know, my, my parents have gone, but uh, how can I use this to help others? So my friends threw me a surprise party um, and such lovely friends, like they know what's important to me. So they used that as a fundraising wow. effort and we raised a thousand kina. Mm. And then I had a, um, a 50 for kidneys, which was my birthday barbecue and people came and bought um, you know, barbecue and pariwa oh. and um, uh, drinks and ice cream and we raised another 2,000 kina there. Fantastic. Mm. So um, there's been a number of fundraising efforts. Um, I've got coming up Art for Kidneys. So that'll be later in October. And um, I have the absolute honour of um, Jeffrey Fieger, who's yes, one of our yes. premier artists. Um, Nanius. Um, as well. Yes. Um, so there's a few artists that are that are coming together to create a masterpiece, and that will be used to um, raise money for the Roger Howell for Kidney Foundation. So, um, you know, thank you, Jeff, and your team for always being such a great support. And also at the event, we've got shave for kidneys. So I've committed to shaving my hair. I'm, I'll go bald. Oh, you have to I'm send us to... a picture so we can show it on the show. And do a follow-up with you, maybe, if you're comfortable to well, do that. Well, there's, um, there's a caveat to that. Oh, I'll, is there? I'll shave my head if I can raise 200,000 kina for kidney health. Mm. So, you know, this, this will all come off, but there is, you will meet there the is a prize tag you know, mm. attached to it. So, you know, if you'd like to support, um, you know, I thought, Lewa, hair is, it's nice to have, but it's not necessary to life. Um, I'd give anything to have my dad back and my mum who passed away in December last year. Mm. Um, but I can't have them back, but I can help other families mm. hold on to their mm. loved ones for a little bit longer. So I'm willing to do that for Kidney Health. Mm. So please uh, support us in this. Um, it will go towards helping our, um, our brothers and sisters. Um, and then, of course, Kokoda for Kidneys mm. is going to be an annual event. Annual fundraiser. Yeah. So, um, if you're interested in walking next year, um, if you'd like to put your body on the line, because it is a gruelling event, um, but it's so worth it. The country is just spectacular. Rivers, mountains. So, even though it's hard work, it's gruelling, it's tough on your body, but to be in the midst mm. of such amazing country you really feel close to the heartbeat of God and uh, you understand how difficult life is in rural areas. It yes. really brings it home. Um, so it's just another way of us to raise awareness, promote healthy living and also raise funds. So where can they find all this information? Um, we have a Facebook page, Kokoda for Kidneys. Um, That'll be so listed somewhere here on the screen. Thank you. Um, there's also the Roger Howell for Memorial page. Um, so I can give you all the links to that. Um, yeah, so please please support us. We're putting ourselves on the line and we'd, we'd like you to be part of that journey as well. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Oh, can I oh, mention yes. my um, our wonderful supporters? Oh, yes, definitely. South Sea Horizons. Um, South Sea Horizons is a Papua New Guinean-owned company that does treks like the Kokoda Track, Mount Willem, um, Kokopo, There's, they've got all kinds of um, adventure, um, adventure trips. But um, Alan Manning and Sai Fowler, as soon as I sent out um, requests for assistance, and not assistance, but saying we're raising money for Roger Hawafa, um, how, how can we structure our, um, how, how can we structure our fundraising? Alan and Sai were the only ones that came back straight away and wow. said, we're in, we're here to help you, this is how we're going to do it. Um, you know, we grew up with hearing Dad on the radio, so, mm. you know, they were behind us right from the start. So, South Sea Horizons, thank you very much. Um, and also NKA Chartered Accountants. So they're holding our funds in trust. Wow. So there's a separation between the you know, us as yes. fundraisers yes. and um, the actual funds. Actual trust, so, yeah. uh, NKA Chartered Accountants, thank you also for your support. And they're doing this as a contribution. No admin fees, they're, they're doing wow. this to support us. So Fantastic. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Janet? Yeah, um, I had um, two fundraisings, like dinner. Okay. 
and one was in 2013 and the other was in 2016. Um, yeah, out of like 30 tables and 50 tables, I only sold 10, so it discouraged me. Oh, okay. But then uh, I knew that people didn't know much about PNG Stoma Association. Yes. So I promised I'm not going to do any fundraising dinner. Okay. Yeah, anymore. We can so, help you, I mean, I guess. Mm -hmm. So this, the fundraising um, that I trying to do, or was trying to do, was to build a stomach care center. Okay. Where it becomes a um, center for um, patients to come and have access to come and collect their uh, supplies and also a distribution center where I pack everything and then I send it outside of Port Moresby to the other provinces. So a, a central location? Mm, yes. Okay. And um, uh, in, in that distribution center, I'm also thinking of being a former uh, teacher. I want to have the school aged children who cannot go into the mainstream to have a little space there and all I do is I can teach phonics and start reading with them and then later when they have their closure and all that they can already know something mm -hmm. how to read and write before they go to the mainstream so that's one of my uh, vision okay. vision for me to build a stomach care center so how can people support you with that do you, can they donate well, make donations yes if they can uh, make donations I mean it, it's not I have to buy land because I've been going to back and forth to the lands office, uh, looking for special purpose state land, and there's nothing available. And um, I mean, everything is taken. But Moresby doesn't have enough land for like people like us, charity organizations. So um, it's it's very difficult. So you're looking at land; it's like over a million to buy. Just a little piece a little of land, plot, yes. and then to build a, a care center, it's even more. Mm. So you would be looking about 2.5 something million. Mm. That's just for the building, and the land is separate. Mm. Uh, I don't have that kind of money. I mean, you know, I've done the next thing I did was the five-year strategic plan. Okay, I only got the response from. Two, two. One was a cash donation. The other one is in kind, but I haven't gone. Okay. Gone. So most importantly, to get people to the awareness walk yes. on the fifth of October, yeah. if I'm yeah. correct. Yes. And that will be held where? Uh, from uh, Ella Beach. Ella Beach. Yeah, we're walking through town. Okay. And then round the ring road there. Okay and back to Ella Beach. So what time? Uh, it starts at uh, 5.45. In the morning? Yes, right. okay. and then depending on if I arrive here within the hour, it will be 7. <laughs> yes, 7. Yeah. Oh yeah, coming back around. Yes. So people can follow you on Facebook then? Yeah, yeah. on uh, PNG Stoma Association. PNG Stoma Association. Yeah. Where Facebook. they can find out more information about your walk and maybe if they want to make donations mm -hmm. to help with your fundraising yes. for your vision yes yes because although it's a vision it can become reality I yes, believe well, for I always say uh, God God already knows where my stomach care center is yes and he knows it will happen I'll have to just continue doing my little part mm -hmm. to serve this uh, my mates you know to give them comfort and at least live you know a decent life yes because this is so, it's very, like you said, you know, like uh, your dad, mm -hmm. he was in this position. So he couldn't accept, like, or he didn't want to go public or, mm -hmm. uh, did he? Um, not really. And I think um, he, he's naturally, a, he doesn't like to ask for help. Yeah. He will give help every day of the week, every hour of the day, but to receive help, it was very difficult for yes. him, so yeah. So a lot of my patients, some of my patients, they are from, you know, like coming out from jobs mm. in managerial positions and mm -hmm. all that, 
when they have this, they are traumatized. Yeah. They don't want to come out in public. Mm. So they are dying, you know, suffering and dying silently in their homes. They cannot get out. I was the same. I mean, you know, I just, uh, what I do, I just give God's favor back yeah. for healing me. Like people ask me, do you get paid for this job? No, God has already mm. paid me. So what I'm doing, it's for my mates. Fantastic, mm. praise God. So do follow Janet at PNG Stoma Association and you can find Michelle for all those links that you said, but your yes. predominant one would be Kokoda for, kidneys. Kokoda for Kidneys. If you do want to learn more about what they stand for and also follow or support their causes, which we all should be a part of, Thank you both so much for joining us here on The Lower Show. It's been an absolute honor and pleasure to have you both here today. Thank you, Lower, Thank you for so allowing much. us to, yeah. you know, to, to give a voice to both our causes. We appreciate it very yes. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And also a huge thank you to our host venue, the Apex House, the iconic Apex House in Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea, for allowing us to use this venue to talk about such issues like this. Mm -hmm. And we hope you've enjoyed this segment of The Lower Show and we will see you again next week for another edition of The Lower Show. I'm your host, Lower Kana. Thank you.